Welcome back. I'm going to continue to go over the various parts, some of which you should now already be familiar with. Thanks for working through that quiz. Trust me, it will make the rest of the course much easier to understand. When you finish with this second part on identifying the components, you'll move on to the actual operation of the power pallet after another quiz at the end of this section, really similar to this last one. Many of these parts you're already familiar with, like the flare, on top of which is the flare igniter. This lights the smoke and gas that comes out of the machine when the engine is not using the gas. Next to the flare are the blowers. A single air blower and the double gas blowers to its left, these suck the air into the gasifier during startup and then push the gas up into the flare where the added air from the air blower helps it burn off cleanly. You'll recognize the engine here and on it the blue oil filter, which will need to be changed regularly, just like in a car, and the condensate vessel, which is the final step in filtering the producer gas right before it enters the engine. You will need to drain this regularly as well. Above that is the back pressure relief valve, which is a safety to let out the pressure in case the engine backfires. You can also see the central wiring conduit which is about in the middle of the machine and in which many of the wires that run to and from the PCU. On the right is the back side of the gas fire where you can see the great basket shaker motor which helps move the ash and feedstock through the reactor and next to that is the ash out auger motor which pushes the waste char ash into the ash collection vessel. Finally this is the reactor access door that you can use to get access for maintenance to the inside of the reactor where the grate basket and ash mechanisms are. Looking at some detailed views, you can see here the ignition port that you use to light the gas fire and the pyroreactor viewport that you might need to open to break up any jams and do maintenance. Here, in this drawing of the gas fire's ash removal system, you can see another view of the two ash removal motors, the auger motor and the great basket shaker motor, as well as the reactor access door and the hand wheel used to unlatch it. To the right is the ash auger pipe, which connects to the ash collection vessel with a sanitary clamp, which is the same type of clamp that holds on the cover to the ash collection vessel and the viewport of the power reactor. Finally is the podium with the automation assembly that includes the process control unit or PCU on the top and the operation panel on the bottom. We'll go into some of the details of the PCU display in the next lecture. On the operation panel you'll find the main power switch and the engine key switch used to start the engine on nod grid time models, and the two flare controls, the gas blower control knob next to the air blower control knob. On the bottom of the panel is the USB port to connect the PCU to a computer so you can update the software as well as see all actions the computer is doing and the readings it is using to decide. Finally is the alarm buzzer which makes a sound to warn you when the computer senses that something is not right with your machine. Above the operating panel at the top of the PCU panel is the hour meter which records how long you have run your engine. Again, only if you don't have the grid tie option. And the round display to the right is the lambda meter which shows the gas air mix. It should stay around 1.05. If it reads error, you should not start up and will need to do some repair or recalibration. 